Welcome back to Mastara for a bonus video, and this time it's topical because Wizards is going through its past properties and weeding out the parts they find objectionable. Magic has had several cards banned for racism lately, and Wizards is going through the rest of the cards to find anything they don't like art-wise. So a bit of advice, buy Earthbind quickly because that card is not long for this world. But where Magic the Gathering goes, Dungeons and Dragons is going to follow, and they've already announced that they are looking at D&D and checking for racism. That, of course, brings me to Mastara. Frankly, we've got some work to do because some of the old stuff isn't going to get past the new rules. Doesn't matter what side of the argument you fall on, whether you get paid by the editor or you've got the first page of Fahrenheit 451 memorized, it's Wizards' game and we're going to have to play by their rules. If Mastara is going to make a comeback, we need to address these points. I'm Mr. Welch, and it's time to update Mastara for Wizard sensitivities. To start, be glad we don't have to worry about the drow, obviously. They might be chaotic evil elves that could probably ace the job interview at Club Vandersex with flying colors, but they're not in Mistara. The shadow elves don't have the same, now controversial appearance, being more like the cavefish of elves with their pigment and their hair color. Also doesn't hurt that the shadow elves outside of the video game are more true neutral or lawful neutral in nature. They only get riled up when their leadership lies to them and uses them for purely political reasons to maintain their power structure. Now, the video game Shadow Elves have the purple skin and attack on sight mentality, but that's on Capcom, not TSR. Orcs are a different case, because orcs and other humanoids are an entirely separate species from demi-humans and humans, unlike other settings. They were created by the immortal Idris and further corrupted by the immortal Hell. The beastmen were created and told that the world would be theirs for the taking, and all they had to do was crush the other races. This is fully in line with the tenets of entropy, tear down the old world and replace it with your own. The beastmen involved into the humanoid races of Mastara today, but they aren't misguided, they were created to conquer. A few have turned to neutrality and even one ascended to immortality is a good aligned immortal, but those are the exception, not the rules. Orcs and the other humanoids believe it is their destiny to conquer the world and enslave the lesser races. This has been part of their culture since the very start. This was heavily discussed back in 2005 on the Wizards Forum, appropriately enough. There are good aligned orcs in Alfheim who are quite civilized compared to the ones that live in the Broken Lands. They come from another plane of existence, by accident actually, and aren't related to the native orcs. Humanoids tend toward the chaotic alignment and follow the rule of survival of the fittest. So if they're led by an evil orc, they turn evil. Technically a good orc could turn them chaotic good, though that would be very rare. Remember, Mistara is based on the law versus chaos axis. Good and evil are secondary. Granted, the ratio of evil orcs to good orcs might be a thousand to one, but there's still that one good orc. Chaotic evil is standard for orcs, but it's not absolute. Another aspect of Mastara orcs you have to consider is they are cultural assimilators. If they fight an opponent that proves to be superior or equal to them, they start to adopt their opponent's appearance and tactics. They wear war paint to appear as their foe, trying to draw in some of their strength. Yellow orcs paint their face to appear like the Ethengar, while red orcs do the same to appear as the Braves of Matrugan. They are trying to steal their opponent's mojo, as it were. Thar's black orcs are the exception, as they gain their name because he's the first orc king to actually use uniforms to give the orcs a uniform feel as he's trying to copy the legions of Thyatis. The issue you're going to have with the humanoids is they are charged with their patrons to conquer. If orcs and goblins raise a city and sack it, they will be showered with blessings by their immortals. They are rewarded for evil deeds, and they're punished for failure. To them, conquering the races they feel are inferior is a good act, because what they are doing, they were born and bred to do. With orcs out of the way, we now hit the biggest problem Mistara is going to have, the Etrugan. Penalizing a race of people based on American Indians for both their intelligence and their wisdom, but increasing their strength and constitution bonuses, raised eyebrows in the 90s, and today would probably start a book burning if somebody tried to slip it past the editors. The Etrugan book was bad. This snippet endangers the entire setting, so it has to go. No exceptions. My solution was to rewrite the whole book. I'm waiting for the last pieces of art to get it done, but then it's going to be free-for-all to pick up. The new book removes the stat modifications. In 5th edition, the Etrugan do get their own racial variant, but that's just tweaking the variant human with unarmored defense to fix an issue between fluff and mechanics. A nation without medium or heavy armor because they are mineral poor means they're going to die a lot because they are easy to hit. That was a major flaw in Beckme, and during the 5th edition playtest, that proved to be just as big of an issue. The rest of the book, without going into too much detail because I want to talk about that book when it's done, turns them in from just stereotypes into actual fleshed out peoples. Basing a nation after the Pacific tribes is fine, but you actually have to make them interesting. The second issue people are going to have with Mistara is the module Drums on Fire Mountain because of the Karakara. Everybody who has brought this up to prove their point calls them orcs, which means they actually haven't read the module as Karakara and orcs have very different abilities. But if you point this out to them, they're just going to call you pedantic. The point is they look like stereotypical Samoans with pig faces and green skins. 
Unfortunately, this is easy enough to fix. Just change the art. Make them something more fierce with no recognizable resemblance to real world cultures and you've removed the only complaint. The one demand I hear from a lot of people, and not just in gaming, is that you can't write about a culture you're not a part of, which of course is bull hockey. Using that logic, my ancestry lets me write about the peoples of Klantir, Berthoven, Hatias, Belain, Etrugan, West Rourke, Cimarron, and Newkirk. That leaves a ton of real world ethnicities that I would have to get somebody to approve of so I could write about that nation. While I know multiple Polynesians, Hispanics, and Italians locally, I'd have to track down a Mongolian, a Melanesian, an Arab, uh, somebody from Portugal, a Serbian, and a Korean to cover some of the nations. Havard or Thorfinn could approve the northern reaches. Rubus could give me the thumbs up for Corindus. I might have to talk to Bruce Hurd himself to see if I got that French part of the book right, because my next option for a French speaker is named Thibodeau. As you can see, that's not feasible. Nastara is comprised of fantasy versions of real nations, but the nations are presented as actual nations. There's no single bad guy nation doing evil for evil's sake. Ethengar is obviously Mongolia, but they aren't mindless raiders. Mogulai Khan is doing what he thinks is best for his people. They're presented as a complex nation being forged into a unified people instead of just feuding tribes. Exactly what Genghis Khan did in real life. Glantry might resemble the Forgotten Realms nation of Thay in motivation, but each of the ten princes are given motivations and their people aren't just stereotypes taken from a ten minute YouTube documentary. The accusations that are leveled at similar themed people like the Forgotten Realms Tugan, where the Ethengar are established and fleshed out, the Tugan just show up as an invading force to be killed and defeated. Then there's going to be people that have a problem with the slavery in Mastara. And it's based on history. There's a lot of it. Nations with slavery in the known world include Ethengar, Thyatis, Alphatia, the Northern Reaches, and the Broken Lands. In the Northern Reaches, all three of the major empires rely on slavery because they're based on the ancient Egyptians, the ancient Greeks, and the Aztecs. And that's not including the slavery represented by the Iron Ring. The slavery differs from nation to nation, much as it did in history. The slaves in the Northern Reaches and Ethengar are prisoners of war. The Broken Lands are the humanoid tribes. They consider the other races beneath them. Thyatis, of course, is Rome, so you have servants, gladiators, performing tasks that could be considered jobs in other nations. The truly brutal jobs are reserved for slaves convicted of some sort of crime. Compare that to Alphatia, where they work as shadow slaves, specifically the Genite people conquered on Skothar. Those are worked to death and replaced when they die. None of this is presented as a good thing. The Iron Ring is flat out pure evil, base villains just to be slaughtered. The setting is tied to history, even the parts that we don't want to look at today. That's something we should never apologize for. If you want to end the slavery, that's your adventure hook right there. Liberate the oppressed and be the hero. That's why you're playing in the first place. Right now, as of this writing, people are looking for reasons to remove the parts of Dungeons & Dragons they don't like. This isn't new. You can disagree with them, you can argue with them, you can join the blood war on Twitter. But it doesn't change the fact Wizards of the Coast owns Mistara, and Mistara does have some things that need to be changed. Fortunately, because the books were given an in-depth treatment all those years ago, we don't have to change much. So until the regularly scheduled video later this weekend, please keep spreading the word, Vatos.